Kia ora friends, ko Brad, toku ingawa, and I'm here to guide you through a workshop that can transform your storytelling skills and the impact you can have through them. Our mission today, to create a two minute story about how Jesus has made an impact in your life, and this story you can share with your friends, your family, whoever crosses your path, so let's get into it. First of all, you're going to need a way of writing down your story. So grab a pen and some paper or your laptop or your phone, anything that can help you get your story written down. Now I need you to find your story. Reflect on a time when Jesus or God moved in your life, changed your perspective or grew your faith. This is a moment unique to you. So have a think about it and write down some ideas. As you're thinking, I want to tell you a story of my own. A few weeks ago, I was attending a three-day retreat at Natiawa River Monastery with a group of other youth coordinators from around the country. It was so good to see my friends and colleagues, and as normal, we stayed up late chatting about life, ministry, and all sorts of other topics. It was around 11.30pm by the time I went to bed. And I was looking forward to having a long, deep sleep without the risk of being woken by young children in the middle of the night. Little did I know that someone else would wake me up early in the morning. Around 6am, while it was still pitch dark, I woke up and heard the Holy Spirit whisper into my heart, Brad, you should go to the chapel. To which I replied, Ugh, go away, Dad like a teenage child of the Most High God. He spoke again, whispering, You should go to the chapel. I have a gift for you. Oh, can't you just give it to me in bed? He replied one more time, and I knew this was going to be the last time. Brad, you really should go to the chapel. I knew it would be the last time he said this, so I rolled out of bed, put some warm clothes on, and went to the chapel. When I arrived, the chapel was dark, cold, and quiet. I lit the altar candles and the little fire in the corner. Soon the room was filled with a warm light, and I sat down with my Bible and journal, wondering what gift the Lord would give me. I began reading through the Gospel of Luke, And as I was reading, I felt the Holy Spirit prompt me to write out a verse I had just read and send it to a specific person, which I did. I continued reading and the same thing happened again. I felt prompted to write a verse and send it to another person. I was both excited and nervous to send these passages to people I knew, as I'd never had this experience before. But as the sun began rising and the chapel filled with clear morning light, it finally dawned on me what the gift was. For the first time in my life, God had given me the gift of prophetic words. Since coming home from Natiawa, almost every morning, God has woken me up around 6am and given me a word or a picture for someone. Mostly these words come in the form of scriptures, and it's been encouraging to be used by God in this way and to hear the confirmations of relevance and timeliness from the people I've sent them to. Through this experience, I am learning that God desires to give good gifts to his children, both for their own benefit and for the building up of the church. I just hope that he lets me have a sleep in on the weekends. You might have noticed that I started my story with three things. When, where, and who. In storytelling, these are called the three magics and will be used to form the opening one or two sentences of your story. Here's the first task. Take out your notepad or device and answer the following questions about your story. When did it happen? Where did it take place? And who was involved? When, where and who. These elements provide context and pull your audience into your world. Once you have these elements, condense them into one or two sentences. And there you go. You've got the opening to your story. With the three magics in hand, it's now time to weave together your story. 
now is the time to write out the details of your story, use descriptive language, and give the audience an idea of what you experienced, felt, taste, or smelt in that moment. Imagine that you're simply sharing this story with a friend over a coffee. The best thing you can do is simply speak the story out loud and write the words as they come. Don't forget to include extra details, sensory experiences, or maybe some funny moments. These small details bring your story to life and make it more relatable. Don't worry about it being perfect. We'll be able to edit it later. Now comes the power line. This is the powerful closing line that leaves a lasting impact. It's the essence or the moral of your story. It's the revelation you had. It's the aha moment. My power line was, through this experience, I'm learning that God desires to give good gifts to his children, both for their own benefit and the building up of the church. You want to finish your story with a bang. That's why the best jokes always leave the punchline till the end. Here are some prompts to get you started. As I walked back from church, I finally understood the true meaning of dot dot dot. Or after experiencing God in this way, I grasped the power of. Or I now understand why. Or maybe through this experience, God taught me this. Feel free to tweak these to fit your own experience. Have some time now to think about what your power line is and write it down. It's now time to put your story together. The best way to do this is to type it out on a computer or have someone type it for you. Put it all into one place that's easy to edit. Don't worry about making it perfect just yet. We're going to do some editing shortly. Now that you've got your three magics, your details, and your power line, it's time to sharpen your story. The most crucial tip, keep it short but impactful. Aim for around two minutes, which equals roughly 250 to 350 words. If your story fits within that word count, great. If not, try to find some elements that you can remove. This will help to focus your story and not distract your audience with unnecessary information. This is a really important step. Practice speaking your story out loud. You can do this at home, on your couch, during your lunch break, or with a friend. Speaking your story out loud gives you both time to practice it, and it's also another refining step, as you will find words that can be removed or don't fit. I would encourage you to practice it at least three times, with one of those times being with someone you trust. They don't need to give feedback, but just sharing a story in front of another person Will build your confidence. You can ask a friend of yours, hey, I've written a story, can I please practice it with you? And I guarantee that they'll say yes. You might be thinking, is there a story in my life that's interesting or important? Or maybe you're feeling like, oh, is my story that great? And my answer to those questions is a resounding yes. Your story is powerful, not just because it's sensational or dramatic, but because it's true and it's yours. Never underestimate the power of authenticity and how God moves through testimony. So Fano, let's embark on this journey together of sharing our experiences, putting them into stories, and then seeing how God moves, touching hearts and souls through these testimonies. And I pray that God will use your stories to encourage you and to build up his church. No data, then I go to, then I go to, then I tato katoa. Amen. I